Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm your friend Arman. So today in this video, we're gonna learn the part two of the law of tort. So guys, today we will learn, as I have told you yesterday, that we will learn mental element in tortious liability. And number two, we will learn tort of conversion or trover. And number three, we will learn malice motive and malice of fact. Okay guys? So stay tuned until the end of this video and this video is going to be very interesting and very important for you because uh, I don't think that you have learned about all of conversion and trover during your LLB or BLLB time. So this is a really important topic so I am going to cover today. So stay tuned till the end of this video but before I begin I request you please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet and do hit the like button if you like this video and do not forget to share this video with your friends. So let's start. Okay. So guys, first of all, we will learn uh, mental element and tortious liability. Okay. So let's understand this first. So what is mental element? That it means to say that uh, intention. It is talking about the intention. It is talking about the intention. Okay. Suppose if a person commits a tort, and when the person commits the tort, that the person is called what? Tort feasible. Tort feasible. Tort feasible. Okay. When the tort tort feasible commits what? Tort commits the tort. And in order, so that will what? So tort is a civil wrong. Yes. Yesterday we discussed is a civil wrong. Civil wrong. And that is what? That is a violation of the legal right of a particular person. That means who? What, who, who person? Person is who? Plaintiff. So plaintiff. So tort fees are who commits a tort to the plaintiff. Okay. So this is the like this is the diagram of the tort. Okay. So once the tort is committed to the plaintiff, what will happen? Uh, the plaintiff will have the right to go to the court to sue the what? To sue has the right to sue tort fees are that is dependent. Okay. That is defendant. Okay. So plaintiff will have the right to sue the tort fees for the wrong. Okay. Now, now the now the while we are discussing right now the mental element. So whether like uh, the the intention, okay, the intention, intention, the intention of the tort fees is necessary or not. So that's what we are talking about today. Okay. Because in order to see. Since he has committed the tort, whether it was intentional or not, whether he has the guilty mind or not. So that's what we're discussing today. So, uh, in case of the criminal law, okay, in case of the criminal law, criminal law, say IPC, say IPC, so in case of the criminal law, a guilty mind, guilty mind, so guilty mind is always necessary, okay, it is very important in case of the criminal law. So, while we will while we'll discuss about IPC, we will be studying in IPC, we will uh, learn about the men's fear, okay? That is men's fear. Men's fear, that is a guilty mind, okay? A bad intention, okay? So that's what we are saying. So in case, so it is about the criminal wrong, but not is a civil wrong, okay? So in case of the civil wrong, whether the intention of the defendant will be held as a response, uh, will be, uh, like, is it necessary to have the mental element or the, like, Evil intention. Evil intention. Whether it is like evil intention is required in order to constitute a wrong or to give the right to the plaintiff to sue the defendant. So whether it is relevant or not. So that's what we are discussing today. So unlike in criminal law, unlike criminal law, in case of the civil law, that uh, sorry, civil law that is taught, intention is generally we can say is not necessary, okay? Not necessary. Not necessary. Okay. If you get questions in your exam, like uh, whether the mental element is necessary in order to constitute the tortious liability, then your answer always should be not necessary. Okay. However, there are certain exceptions where the mental element becomes necessary. Okay. So that's what we are going to discuss now. So. see the exception now okay uh, mental element mental element mental element when necessary when relevant okay so 
mental element when relevant. Okay, this is the first situation when the mental element will be held uh, relevant. Okay, generally it is not relevant. Okay, if a person commits a tort, he will be held responsible or liable for the tortious activity. Okay, but uh, this is a uh, this is the situation where the mental element is relevant. Okay, so what are the situation we will learn here? Mm. So, uh, in case of the uh, like, in case of the assault, battery, assault battery, false imprisonment, false imprisonment, false imprisonment. That's it. That's it. I'll explain you about all these uh, terms. Uh, that's it. And malicious prosecution. Prosecution. Malicious prosecution. And conspiracy. So, in case of the tort like assault, battery, man, uh, false imprisonment, basic malicious prosecution, and conspiracy, in this uh, like regarding this this tort, uh, mental element is relevant. Okay, mental element is relevant. Because in order to constitute assault, battery, false imprisonment, deceit, and malicious prosecution and conspiracy, the mental element is relevant. Okay. And another, okay, added a conversion. Conversion is also one kind of tort. So, one kind of tort or trover. It is also known as trover. T R O V E R. Okay. So, this might have been come to this might come to your exam also that what is conversion or. Okay, so in the in uh, respect of the assault battery and all this, uh, mental element is essential. Okay, in order to constitute, because what happened? Uh, suppose assault. Assault means what? Assault means what? Uh, assault means you know uh, showing the intention to the other person. Okay, suppose if I'm doing this, if I'm doing this, that means like I'm you know trying to. Uh, Make other person feel that I, you know, like I will, I might use the criminal force to that person. Okay, so that will be assault. Okay, and the battery is since the moment I touch that person with the intention, okay, with the wrongful intention of hitting that person, and the moment I touch, the assault turns out to be a battery. Okay, and false imprisonment, it is simple, like uh, without any lawful justification, a person is detained. That is false imprisonment, and that's it. That's it means uh, to deceive someone, to cheat. Okay. And malicious prosecution and malicious prosecution that means uh you know malicious that means uh false uh prosecution you know if you file a shoot uh you know false case on the basis of the false ground you when you file a shoot in order to make that you know in order to disturb the other person so that is a malicious prosecution and conspiracy conspiracy means uh what like when you conspire to do certain things or do a uh, illegal activity or do certain things in order to uh, disturb other person you know when the two or more person you know conjointly you know plan out or plot it to do certain things certain wrongful things uh, which which will be prejudiced to the other person so that will be conspiracy okay and uh, and another is conversion okay so conversion is that like uh, willfully interfering the property of other person I will explain it later because this is the second topic that we are going to discuss. So I will discuss about it later in detail. So, in case of the assault, battery, false imprisonment, and malicious prosecution, and conspiracy and conversion, a mental element is less like uh, is important. Okay, because suppose uh, assault. Okay, I might just do it like this okay, without having intention to you know beating or eating or making that person feel that I might you know a certain harm will be inflicted upon that person. So I might do like without any intention also. But that's why the intention is really necessary. Okay, so that's why just, I'm just giving the example of the uh, assault. But in all the all, all the cases of this 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 tort, 
मेंटल एलिमेंट इज मेंटल एलिमेंट इज रेलिवेंट ओके so uh, in case of the like mental element when relevant like it is generally expected like uh, if a person uh, suppose it is generally expected from a prudent person okay he is a prudent person and it is expected that he will not uh, do any certain wrong activity uh, or whenever like it is uh, it is believed that the he will do certain thing like generally you know what what happened when we think about the certain things or certain wrong or some certain awful activity suppose assault okay Let's suppose assault. A person committed an assault. Okay, but what happens when the assault is because of the provocation, provocation by the plaintiff itself? Okay, so in that case, uh, you know, common person, the court will see what will happen if the common, what will happen to the common person. Suppose the court will, you know, uh, presume that like this could be the reason or this could be the possibility. Suppose let's suppose okay, this is Mr. A and Mr. B. Okay, I'll try to make it. Uh, Easier for you to understand. So this is like Mr. A and Mr. B. Okay. So Mr. A has committed assault to B. Okay. That he has shown his fist like this. Okay. I will harm you. Kind of. So. So this and uh, A has committed assault to assault to what? Assault to B. Okay. And now B filed a suit against A before the court that he has committed an assault, a tort of assault. So what happened? But in his written statement, that means the W S. written statement he said that i was under the provocation 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 that he was instigated by b before he committed the assault he was instigated by b okay so in this case like uh, the court will presume okay if such kind of provocation if general person would have got okay if other person would have got such kind of provocation how other person would have behaved okay If the person, if the other person of the common prudence uh, behave the same manner as he he has done, then in that case he will not be held responsible. Okay, so that is that the courts uh, always uh, look after. Okay, before discussing, before giving the judgment. Okay, so this is the mental element. I hope it can be like it is easier for you to understand now. So now uh, we will see the another situation. Okay, where the Mental element is not uh, relevant. Okay, so number two scenario is that mental element, mental element when not relevant. Mental element when not relevant. Okay, so in the case of when the mental element not not relevant. so there are certain exceptions okay like certain things where the mental element is not relevant for example in case of the absolute liability absolute liability in the case of absolute liability uh, strict liability strict liability strict liability or defamation defamation and uh, we have uh, vicarious liability vicarious vicarious liability so guys uh, the mental element when not relevant okay excuse me <coughs> of the absolute liability strict liability defamation and vicarious liability in this like in case of the in these cases mental element is not relevant or you can say uh, not at all relevant okay because if you have committed a defamation to a particular person whether you have intention to defame that person or without intention you did it but since you have defamed the person and that is harmful and and that you know harms the reputation of the other person so since the moment you did it so you will be held responsible no matter whether you had intention or not okay so similarly in the case of the strict liability and absolute liability and vicarious liability also so vicarious liability is what i'll discuss it in later part of my video that what is vicarious liability and absolute liability we'll read i think all of it in the separate videos okay 
So vicarious liability is the liability of the other person. Okay, when you hire an agent to do certain acts, the, age, the act of the agent binds you. Okay, no matter whether you have intention to do so or not. Since you have hired some somebody to do the work, so the moment he did it, so he will also bind you. Okay, his activity also binds you. Okay, so that's the vicarious liability. So this is the mental element in the tortious liability. It's so simple to understand that. In case of the assault, battery, false imprisonment, there is it malicious prosecution and conspiracy and a conversion. Mental element is relevant, okay. But in case of the mental, uh, in case of the absolute liability, strict liability, defamation, vicarious liability, mental element is not relevant, okay. So. Uh, in the case of the different like defamation, there is important cases okay which I wanted to tell you. Uh, please note it down because uh, you might have got question, you might get questions in the in your exam like uh, suppose this 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 case uh, related to the which uh, taught. So in that time, you have to remember okay these cases are really important. Uh, Cassidy, C A S S I D Y Cassidy versus Daily. Mirror, Daily Mirror newspaper, Daily Mirror newspaper, Daily Mirror newspaper limited, nineteen twenty nine. Okay. So what happened in this case? In this case, what uh, in this case the uh, like there was a defamatory statement published by the uh, newspaper agency, newspaper against the Cassidy and. While the case was in the court, uh, uh, the defendant's contention was that, I and mean, the newspaper's contention was that it was not intentional. We didn't thought that uh, the, our you know article will defend this person like Cassidy. But since the since his uh, reputation or since he was dis defamed, he he was dis defamed. So that's why the defendant was held responsible or liable for the defamation. Okay. So this case is really important, and this case might be asked in the exam. Okay. Another case related to the related to this topic that is on uh, Halton H U L T O N Halton and Company versus Jones Jones 1910 okay so these are these two questions are related with the uh, defamation okay or the mental element when not relevant okay so now So now we will move ahead to the second topic of the today's discussion. That is These topics are really small, it's known, but uh, if you just watch this video um, nicely, you will you don't need it. you don't have to read it again, okay? So now our uh, next topic that is thought of conversion. Thought of conversion or uh, conversion is also known as trouble. Okay, what is trouble? This this question might be coming in the exam also. Or uh, like suppose uh, if A did A has committed this this to B and like this. So what kind of fraud is this? This kind of question may, might be coming in the exam. So so watch this video very carefully. Okay. So uh, so what is conversion? First of all, we need to understand this. So conversion is a like uh, act, okay. Number one, it is an act, and what kind of act? Act uh, where the defendant, okay, defendant, act committed by the defendant, okay, without unlawful justification. So 
let's take the example there is a two person okay? there is a two person Mr. Mr. A and Mr. B okay Mr. A and Mr. B okay so here in this case like what will happen in case of the conversion suppose uh, A has uh, let's say he has a horse okay he has a horse and uh, what he has done B has done B hired his horse okay he hired his horse for riding. He took his horse for riding. Horse for riding. So he took it and and he left left the horse. He left the horse in uh, in jungle. Let's suppose in jungle. Jungle. He's, he left the horse in the jungle. Okay. So uh, when uh, like. When the purpose is over, okay, his riding is over, he left the horse in the jungle, okay. And when he was looking for, when A was looking for his horse from B, from B, what B did, B has, B has not returned the horse to him, okay, to the real owner. Real owner here is A, okay, he did not return. Instead, he, you know, willfully uh, interferes or say willfully, you know, uh, destroys his property or say, you know, yeah, it is a destroy only because his horse was with him, uh, he is the owner, but his, without his uh, permission, he did it, okay? He did it. So, it is called, you know, this kind of wrong is called uh, conversion, okay? So, let's see, okay, let's see, let's take another example that will, after that, it will be very easy for you to understand. Uh, in the simple language, what will happen, what, what, uh, what the conversion means is that, suppose if, you know, if I have a house, okay? And I have rented that house to the to my tenant, and in my absence, what tenant does? He you know sold that house to somebody else. Okay. So in that case, uh, and when I am looking for my house or the rent or anything, like the ownership of the house is you know transferred to somebody else. Though it is not possible, I'm just giving an example. Okay, this could be have anything. So it is about so trouble always happened with the chattels. Okay. So the subject matter. Subject matter, subject matter of trouble is always, is always chattel, chattel, so chattel means what, chattel means movable property, chattel means a movable property, so chattel always happened with the movable property, suppose you know my friend asked me, okay, ask me, give me a bike for 10 minutes, so I have given my bike to my friend and but what he did, you know, he sold that bike to somebody else or he let sublets the uh, bikes to somebody else. And when I was looking for the bike, you know, the bike was, uh, you know, uh, suppose the bike was destroyed or bike caught fire or bike got accident. So in that case, the loss will be suffered by whom? The loss is mine because the bike is mine since the loss is also mine. So now, so that kind of, you know, that kind of uh, act is known as trover or say, uh, what was that conversion? Okay. So uh, there is some case studies which will make it very easy for understanding this topic nicely. So in, I'll write one sentence here. Uh,
So uh, this line is very important, like very important, and it should be your in your answer okay, if you are if this question is done. So so if a person gives some other person the right of right to title of a good which belongs to the somebody else without the lawful justification, that person would be deemed to be a guilty of conversion. Okay. So let's understand. Suppose Mr. A, Mr. A has a bike. Bike. Okay. Mr. A has a bike. Okay. Suppose Mr. A has a bike and Mr. A has a bike and uh, I mean the owner of the bike is A but it is in the position of B because he because B asked him suppose B is a like a, so, okay B asked his, B asked A for two days two days that A is bike give me your bike for two days B asked A okay so with him so similar so a given that bike to B, okay, and after that what happened? So within these two days only, B given the bike to the somebody else to C, okay, you know, B sold the bike to C. Now when A is looking for his bike after the two days, what happened? The B, the bike is in is in the hand of C, okay. Now B is guilty of conversion, okay. So this is what this is what this line is trying to convey, okay. Now there are some case laws. This will be more easy. It should make more easy to you understand this topic. So in the case of Sayyid, okay, S Y, this case is really important, okay. So that uh, right, jot it down. Sayyid versus H H E Y. Okay. So in this case, what happened? Uh, it was held by the court that. So yeah, so in this case the court said that uh, uh, like uh, a giver and receiver. receiver, giver and receiver, like both, like both the party will be responsible, responsible jointly. Joint tort visa as joint tort visa. Okay, so here in this case, the court said that the giver and receiver responsible, both the parties will be held, both persons will be held responsible as a joint tort visa. Okay, take the example of that horse again. There is a horse of A, and he given that horse to be on, on hire. Uh, B hired his horse for two days and and he sold the similar horse to C okay so now what happened so both B and C because B also did not interest back before uh, purchasing the horse who is a real owner so so both B and C will be held responsible as a joint tort visa okay because both the person has done the uh, tort of conversion so now both both of them will be held as a joint tort visa okay so this was the case of Sayyid versus Ahe and another case law is there which is about uh, conversion by destruction and there are various kind of uh, conversion okay? the conversion could be of anything so this case his name is Richardson 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 versus uh, Atkin Richardson versus Atkinson. So in this case, what happened? The defendant really holds. Okay. So in this case, what happened? The defendant, the other defendant is uh, Atkin and Richardson is a plaintiff. Okay. Plaintiff has a wine, wine a cask, cask or say bottle. Okay. He has a wine bottle. He has a wine bottle. And what Atkin does here that. Without the knowledge of the Richardson, he, you know, uh, bore out, suppose, let's suppose this is a bottle of wine, okay, this is a bottle of wine, so this, uh, this bottle is full of wine, and without the intention, without the knowledge of the Richardson, what attention does, he pour out some, uh, like, pour out some, uh, 
wine in a tumbler okay so he pour out some and in order now the moment like uh, he pour out some uh, wine to his uh, tumbler what happened like there is a so uh, the to in order to fill the you know empty part what he did he filled the water okay he filled the water in it to make it good okay to make it good the loss so now what happened so since he has you know introduced certain water into it in order to make it good the taste or say the flavor whatever it has the of the wine you know that will somewhere what some will decrease okay the taste or anything like quantity whatever it is so that will be decreased that was decreased so now this is you know so in this case the attention has done what trover or say conversion okay so this was the case attention uh, pour out some uh, wine and in order to make the good to the remaining part of the wine what he did he you know filled the bottle with the water now the taste of the uh, wine you know decreased or you know quality of the water uh, sorry uh, wine decreased so this is called the trover or say conversion here atkinson has committed the trover okay and the court was held in line so this was the case of atkinson versus uh, sorry richardson versus atkinson okay so this case is also very really important Let's see another situation. So, where? Uh, here we need to like uh, remember one thing, which is important. That uh, suppose you know, if you find okay, if you find find a lost good, if you find a lost good. And you kept that good for a long time, okay. But in that case, okay, and you kept kept the good for good for long time, long time. You kept the good for long time, okay. So now what happened? Uh, long time. But uh, so this is fine, okay. This is not the. You cannot say this is a conversion, okay. This is not a conversion. But you know when the you know when you find the real owner, okay, real owner. real owner of the good and real owner comes to you and ask for the good ask for the good then you deny then you deny no i cannot give you deny so that is a trover or that is the conversion okay but as long as you are keeping the good with you and uh, and owner is unknown to you and till that moment it is not a conversion okay but when the real owner ask for the good you have to return that good to him okay And if you don't return, that will be a conversion. And uh, so another case, uh, it's okay. Also very important case on this regard. That is a uh, M combi. agent does a sold the property to somebody else okay to see suppose agent sold the property to somebody else and when you know when the owner ask for the property ask for the property when the owner ask for the property so agent agent has nothing to return since he has already sold the property to somebody else so in this case what happened the court has held the agent as well as the like the buyer responsible for the tort of conversion okay already that if you if you find a lost good and you will not be held responsible until and unless uh, you are willing to return that product to the real owner okay but what happens
happened, uh, there is an exception to that rule, that is, uh, in case of the grade union difficulties. Okay. Let's, let's see, so let's understand what is trade union difficulties. So, in case of the trade unions, uh, I think you have heard about the trade union uh, in your law level paper. If you know the trade union are the unions of the persons of a, who works in a particular country, a particular, who works for the particular uh, company or institution. Okay, so those trade unions, like uh, those trade unions, may you know uh, keep the property. Kill the property, property, kill the property of the company, say company or factory. Keep the property of the company or factory. Until and uh, with a demand that until and unless if you pay us, I will not, uh, you know, we will not do this or we will just uh, keep this machinery with us. Like that, you know, they can have such kind of uh, condition. Okay, but in that case, uh, since they have, they are keeping the product in the product or the machinery of the company, they will not be held responsible under the law, uh, law of tort of conversion. Okay, because it is a, it is for their difficulties and they are doing it in order to, you know, take the salary from the uh, organization or institution wherever they are working. Okay, so this is an exception. Okay, of the trouble. Now I hope uh, it is clear to you about the what is conversion or thought of conversion or rover. Now let's move ahead with the third important topic that we are discussing today. As I have told you, it is a motive and malice. Motive, motive and malice. So motive and malice, okay. So what is motive? Motive is a simple thing. In simple term, motive is reason, reason behind the act. Reason behind the act. Motive is reason behind the act. Okay. And malice is what? Malice is wrongful. behind the act that is motive and the wrongful motive or wrongful reason behind the act that is malice okay so uh, let's understand okay what is motive first and under malice we have malice in law okay we'll discuss it later but let's understand first uh, what is motive okay so motive means the reason behind the act of or conduct. Motive is generally irrelevant for a liability in tort. Okay. So since we are discussing about the liability, like uh, intention, first we have discussed about whether the intention of the person is like uh, intention or mental element is relevant or not. So that so the same part we are discussing now that motive and malice. Okay. So whether the mo so number one thing is that motive is not a uh, motive is not Relevant. Relevant. However, certain exceptions are there where the motive is also relevant. Okay. Suppose, uh, suppose feeding forcefully, feeding forcefully, hunger, striking, hunger is striking a person. Reason of him. striking prisoner or uh, conducting a surgery of a unconscious person, unconscious man in order to save his life. So so these are the uh, exceptions, okay, like I suppose this could be the exception, like feeding and hunger striking prisoner, 
in order to save his life and again conducting a surgery of an unconscious person in order to save his life. So this could be like uh, uh, exceptions where a motive is not res motive is uh, relevant. Okay, motive is re relevant. But rest of these cases, apart from these cases, motive is generally not responsive as a uh, relevant. Motive is not relevant in case of the tort. Okay, motive is not relevant in tort. Okay. So it's like that only. Okay? It is not necessary that whether you have, you know, intention to harm that person or you did it uh, like no without knowingly, you were so oblivious about it. So those kind of excuses are not allowed. Okay, just because you have a good intention, since you, uh, you have a good intention, you will be not excused by the law of court, under the law that you have a good motive, that's why it, you will be not responsible. It, is, it will be not like that. So, okay. Since you have violated the legal, legal right of other person, so you will be held responsible regardless of the motive. Okay. Mm. So now we will see the merits. Okay. So this is about the motive. Motive is not relevant. To summarize this, motive is not relevant generally in the, in the thought. But in certain cases, motive is relevant, like uh, feeding a hammer, striking a prisoner, or conducting a surgery of an unconscious person to in order to save his life. So in such in certain situations, a motive is relevant. But apart from that, if you have violated the right of another person or anyone, so if you have a more good motive or good bad motive, regardless of your motive, you will be held responsible. Okay, so that's what motive. Okay, now we'll discuss the merits. There are two types of malice. That is number one, malice in law, and number two, malice, malice of fact. So, what is malice in law? First, we'll understand this. Okay. So medicine law is no excuse first of all, no excuse, there is no excuse, if you have committed the medicine law then you will be held responsible, okay. Suppose, uh, I'll try it again, so medicine law, so in case of the medicine law what will happen, suppose if you uh, commit, if, if you are, uh, you know, if you commit, uh, if you commit defamation, defamation of uh, plaintiff, so so defamation is what a violation of the legal right of the plaintiff because everyone has a right right to have a dignified life. Okay. So when you you know harm the dignity of the person, that will be defamation. Okay. So since you have committed the de de defamation, then you will be held liable, responsible, regardless that whether you have a knowledge or not, or whether your intention was good or bad. That is completely irrelevant. Okay. So that's what the malice in law. Okay. Now we will see the malice in fact. Or the evil motive. Evil motive. 
this is the actual malice, okay? This is the actual malice. All the questions will come to you uh, from the malice in fact or mal uh, evil motive only, okay? So all the, you know, torn which are torn that we are going to discuss, uh, so all will come under the malice in fact only, okay? So it is a, uh, in its popular sense, or the malice of fact or actual malice, it means an evil motive of a wrongful act. Yeah, same thing. So it is an evil motive, okay? It is an evil motive. Evil motive. dependent uh, with the motive of spite, vengeance, ill will or revenge if he commits certain act okay so he commits a certain act so whatever the act he has done so that will be come under another taunt but so that, that kind of motive is known as malice okay you know having a wrong motive to come, commit certain things so that will become that will that will be known as evil motive or so malice in no, malice in fact. Okay, so that is the the malice in the part of the defendant because defendant has a bad intention, wrong intention or ill will to do certain act, which will be harmful for the plaintiff. Okay, so that intention is known as uh, malice. Okay, malice or say evil motive. Okay, I hope it is really it's really easy. You can see. like I think you can you know it very well. So there are certain case laws, okay. So the case laws we will see here regarding this medicine of medicine fact. So the case is red hole. says that a lawful act doesn't become unlawful merely because of the evil motive okay so here in this case what had happened uh, there was a uh, there was a plain there was a uh, you can say two parties are there okay it's a and b a is a plaintiff and b is a defendant okay so what happened they have an adjoining land okay they have an adjoining land they have adjoining land and A wanted to sell his you know land to B okay at his price and what happened B is not willing to purchase at the price quoted by A okay so now what happened uh, there was a uh, underground water okay there was underground water and what he did he you know he constructed a reservoir he constructed a reservoir and the, all the ground water you know will be stored in at his uh, premises only and now the the underground water is restricted 
to go to the reservoir of the defendant okay reservoir of the defendant so now what the defendant does defendant file a suit against mr a that is the plaintiff that he has constructed the reservoir and now all the all the water is is stored in his water uh, in his land only and i am i am the type of the water okay he filed a suit against a but the court now held that since a has a right to construct whatever the thing he wanted in his land and he is doing in his land only though he is able motive because if he did if he did so what will happen b will be you know compelled to purchase his land uh, at his price okay at his price so though he has a able motive but the act is not unlawful act is completely justified on the ground of law so that's why uh, it is said that a lawful act does not become merely become a uh, because of evil motive okay so now i think it is clear to you this case is really important okay redford corporation versus pickles Another important case uh, that is uh, of Indian in Indian case, town area country. this case what happened okay so there was a prabhu dayal is a plaintiff here plaintiff and town area committee is a defendant okay so the, in the in this case what happened the prabhu dayal you know has constructed a building okay building constructed a building building and the building the construction of the building was illegal okay the illegal construction there was illegal construction okay prabhu dayal has a building and what is that is illegal okay illegally constructed not according to the uh, rules you know provided by the municipal corporation okay so what happened the head of the town area committee who who happened to be an enemy of the plaintiff okay so they have an enmity so they have an enmity so what happened uh, happened to be enmity so what he did a uh, town area committee you know demolished 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 this construction okay demolished this construction now the plaintiff filed a suit against the town area committee okay town area committee that he is my uh, we have an enmity so that's why he did it uh, that was the contention of the plaintiff but the court said that though the town area committee or or say the head of the town area committee has enmity with you that means obviously he will he has a evil motive evil motive but regardless of his motive since you have constructed the house illegally so that's why the you know demolition act was the act of demolition was legal okay so that's what it means a legal act doesn't become illegal merely on the ground of uh, evil motive okay so i hope it is clear to you now so so this is the end of this video today so we have discussed uh, about the uh, malice motive tort of conversion and mental element in the tortious liability so if you are watching till this end of this video thank you so much for watching this video and Please subscribe to my channel and do hit the like button if you like this video and if you have any questions or queries please uh, you can ask me on the description or you can comment down and in my description box I am I will mention you uh, my Instagram handle where you can contact me with Instagram also and thank you so much once again have a great day guys and in tomorrow we will discuss about the uh, general de uh, general defense okay we'll discuss general defense of tortious liability what are the general exception in the tort okay law of tort so we'll discuss that so thank you so much once again bye bye